Okay. I don't know if people, I got 15 of you back. I'm sure the rest of you are fi filing back in. So, and it's okay, because I'm going to set up the, the, the situation. Let's have my favorite one, which is calcium hydroxide again. But now let's react with phosphoric acid. And again, I'm ignoring the states. I'm just focusing on balancing. Goes to Ca3PO42 plus H2O. Okay, so you guys, do you guys want me to write the elements underneath? Do you like see that? Let me see what the text, let me get the text box up too. Put that down. Uh, someone said yes. Okay, so let's show the elements underneath. Calcium underneath is the metal. There's no other metals. So I have one and three. So what am I going to do? So I would say put a three in front of that calcium. So now uh, they're both three. You have to do that when you, you have to cross it out and go, uh, like that, it's, it helps actually. Okay, then let's look. So what I'm gonna do, what, what's the non-metal that's not hydrogen and oxygen here? Anybody? I see PO4. And PO4, if you look at it, PO4 doesn't change. It doesn't go to PO2 or P or anything like that. So actually, I can just count PO4. Is that all right? I hope this is okay. So let me, how many PO4s are on the reactant side? I count one, yeah, someone said one. How many on the product side? Two. Two, good. So to fix it, I'm gonna put a two out in front of this. So you gotta do that yet, yeah, like that and then cross this out. Now I have two phosphates on each side. So now I'm gonna to go to hydrogen. All right, how many hydrogens are on the product side? Two. Two. How many hydrogens are on the reactant side? Six. Mm, careful, okay, wait, let's ignore calcium hydroxide. How many hydrogens are here? Okay. Three. Uh, well, but there's a two in oh. front. So the two multiplies by everything. So there's actually six there. How many hydrogens are over here? Two. Well, but there's three oh, in front. Six. So, six, so I have six hydrogens here and six hydrogens here. So actually 12, someone got that. I saw it too, but okay. Good job for that person. Um, <laughs> So how do I fix it? What am I going to do? How do I get, I want to get 12. So this is kind of the idea of the lowest common multiple. The lowest common multiple between two and 12 is 12. So I want to have 12 on both sides. How do I get 12? Well, someone said add six. I'd actually technically we're multiplying by six or put a, put a six in front. Yeah, six times two. There we are. So that's now 12. Now let's check the oxygens. This might be tough. Okay, can I, let me, let me put this up so you can see the oxygen. So if I'm doing oxygen, can we ignore PO4? Because I've already counted the oxygens in that. Do you mind if I do that? There's, we could count all the oxygens if you want, but since PO4 stays unchanged, okay. So, so how do you just randomly add six? I'm confused on that. You just over here do that yeah because i mean technically up here there's there were two hydrogens um, six times two equals 12. i wanted 12 right so i want to put a multiplier that gives me the same number of hydrogens as this yeah okay okay perfect all right so if you guys don't mind, can I ignore the oxygen and PO4? I'm gonna ignore these oxygens because they've already been counted. They're the same on both sides, yeah? We could count them. How many oxygens are here? One. Six. 
six, good. Because there's two OHs and then there's three calcium hydroxides, yeah? All right, so I have six oxygens over here. Not counting the phosphate, how many oxygens are over here? Six. six. So this is actually balanced. Technically, if I wanted to count the total, it would be six plus two times four, eight, which would be, technically there's 14 oxygens on both sides, but we didn't have to do that, right? Because it, th those other eight were already in phosphate and phosphate was already counted. So you can do that if you want. You could do 14 and 14, or you could do six and six and ignore the ones in phosphate. You could do it either way. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, I'm gonna do an even harder one. Are you guys ready? Okay, so I wanna do a combustion reaction. These are very important. Uh, C2H6 plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide and water. Super important reaction. Okay, so balance the metals. Where are the metals in this? Are there any metals? No. No metals. Okay, so go to non-metals that are not hydrogen and oxygen. That's only what? Carbon. Carbon. So on the left side, I have two. On the right side, I have one. So what am I going to do? I want to have two. two. So I'm going to put a two. Two times one is two. The lowest common multiple between two and one is two. Right, okay, so that's now two. Okay, let's look at hydrogen then. Hydrogen here I have six, and over here I have two. Two. How will I fix that? Lowest common multiple between two and six is six. So I want six over here. How will I get Multiply six? Multiply by three. Multiply by three. Okay, now I have six. Let's go to oxygen. So on the left side, I have two. Oh, is that me? <laughs> on the right side, how many oxygens are on the right side? Three. Not three and not one. Careful. Okay, so how many, wait, let's slow down. How much, how many oxygens are in this term? Seven, you have three. Three, because it's three times one. How many oxygens are in this term? Four. Four. So actually I have seven. 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 What? Okay. So this is where we really have to think hard. Both of these, they're both prime numbers. So actually the lowest common multiple is actually the product is 14. So there's two ways to do this. I could do... I, I could do what we call pseudo balancing. People don't like that so much. Um, I, I don't know. I guess students, students are doing I could show you both ways if you want, but I like actually like the lowest common multiple. So if I have two here and I want 14, how would I get 14 of these over here? Someone said multiply by seven. That's absolutely correct. So now I have 14 there. Okay, here's the trick. If I have seven total here, how will I get 14? Multiply by two? Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna double this times two for everything. Everything product. So that's actually, I'm gonna rewrite the whole darn thing. Is that okay? So I'm gonna write, C2H6 plus 7O2 goes to, okay, I'm going to double that, which would be how many? Four. Four CO2. And I'm going to double that, which would be how many? Well, six. By six. H2O. H2O. Okay. And then let's, let's, so, ah, what did we do? Okay, so wait, now I fix the oxygen, right? I have, where did I go? I have six plus, how many are there? Eight, six, six. Plus, 
Yeah, six plus eight. So let's go back, let's check the oxygen first. Six plus eight is 14. And over here I have seven times two is 14. So oxygen's okay. Let's go back, what about carbon? Did I fix it? Let's see, how many carbons? Over here I have two, over here I have four. So mm. when I doubled stuff, I need to go back and fix this one. How will I fix this one? What will I do? Add a two. I'm gonna put a two. Now that's four. And let's check the hydrogens. How many hydrogens do I have here? 12. 12. And how many do I have here? 12. Okay, and I haven't actually changed the oxygen, so it should still be 14. So that's, that's balancing a combustion problem. I, I could give you another one of those if you want to try another one. Do you guys want to try another one or we can move on? What would you prefer? Could we do one more? Okay, let's do one more, certainly. Okay, so let's see if I can just flip it over. C4H10 plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide and water. Let me hide that other one. Okay. And carbon, four, and one. So I'm going to put a four. Yeah? Mm hmm Hydrogen, ten and two so i'll put what will i put i want to get rid of the two multiply by five yeah okay so now hydrogen's 10 oxygen how many oxygens are here two two how many are in this term eight eight and nine or five eight and five is 13, oh my goodness. So what's the lowest common multiple of two and 13? They're both prime numbers. So actually the lowest common multiple is 26. 26. Oh my goodness, how do we get 26? What am I gonna do? Do you multiply them by each other like 13 by two? Yeah, so I'm gonna multiple. wanna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go 13 times two is 26 there how do i if i have 13 here here's that thing if i have 13 here and i want 26 what have i got to do multiply by two yeah i'm going to double so i'm going to double the double times two right okay so i'm going to have let's, let's put it 26 on both sides i want 26 so i have 13 oxygens here i doubled four so i'm going to have eight co2 and I doubled five, I'm gonna have 10 H2. water. And then if you notice, I've changed the number of carbons here to eight. So let's go back and if, if I wanna have eight of those, it'll be two, two C4, H10. Do you guys wanna learn the second method? Is it I easier? I, some people like it, some people don't. Sure. What I don't like about it is some people don't finish it. They, they get halfway done and then they quit. It's called pseudo balancing. So I'm gonna do it with this same example, okay? So here we, got, we have C4H10 plus oxygen goes to CO2 plus H2O. And so what we did is we said, okay, four, and five, that's what we did before, right? And then the oxygen was 13 and two, right? And I want, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this one to have 13 oxygens, that would equal, well, 14 oxygens would be seven O2s, right? You mm -hmm. agree with that? Seven O2 would equal 14 and 602 would equal 12. So what I'm gonna have. But how would you know that it's gonna be 13? Well, cause you have 13 oxygens over here. Oh, okay. So if I wanna have 13 over here, instead of doubling stuff, I could just make 13 by having six and a half. 
And that, that's what's called pseudo balanced. So, so to do pseudo balance, um, first thing is pseudo balance. But in the videos, it says that you, that, uh, that you can not have like half of molecule. No, yeah, you cannot have half of a molecule. So there's a second step is double everything. You are absolutely correct. Double everything. So I still am stuck rewriting this entire equation. I'm just going to multiply everything by two. So one times two is two C four H 10. Let me bring that up a little higher. And two, what's two times six and a half? 13. 1302 goes to two times four, eight CO2 plus and then two times five, 10 H2O. Okay, and so we, we, at the end of the day, we get the same answer, right? I also, I wanna, before I leave, I'm gonna leave balancing really quickly here, but in a, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about is, um, if you have a common denominator. So we talked about lowest common multiple. If you have a common denominator, then you're what's called, uh, you are your quote overbalanced. And that's not correct either to be overbalanced. And if that's the case, you need to divide out the common factor. So let me just do a really simple one. Let's go back to water. What if after balancing my water, I had 4H2 plus 2O2 goes to two, I'm sorry, 4H2O. And so I might notice, you guys see a common denominator there? What's my common denominator? Two. Yeah, common two. So then that means I'm gonna divide everything by two. I, I don't wanna leave it like this. Even though, if I look at it, I have eight hydrogens here and I have eight hydrogens there and I have four oxygens here and four oxygens there, but the chemists don't like it because actually the balanced chemical equation is always the lowest common multiple. And so if you, if you have a common multiple, then you have to divide it out. So I just divide this by two and just fix it back to two H2 plus O2 goes to two H2O. Now there's no common. Does that make sense? Okay. So that is balancing. Um, any questions about this? I think we did qu quite a bit, actually. I, I showed the harder things that you should find. And, um, are, you going, are you going to go over the different types of reactions that there are? Uh, yeah, we can, we can look at the different types of reactions. In this PowerPoint slide, it doesn't go through a lot of them. Um, let's let's actually talk about that. That's actually a really good point. Um, okay, so let me just start all over, <laughs> and let's talk about. There, there's different ways of of separating reactions into categories. There's four basic kinds of reactions. And so all reactions are one of the four. Okay, so this is one way, it's just the, ba the basic way. 
And then there's another way of looking at what we call specific or special cases of reactions. So with the basic kinds, the first one's called a combination. And so this has the form of two components joined together to be a together component. Let's, let me give an example. An example would be the reaction I wrote. Hydrogen combines with oxygen to make water. Now it doesn't, now it, it's just things coming together. Here I have, that I have coefficients. There's two hydrogens combining with one oxygen, but it's still a combination, okay? So that's a, that's a basic kind. Um, um, what's the question? Or, okay. okay, maybe that was just some feedback. I might have a microphone on my camera that's doubled with my headphones. Okay, anyway, the, the other one, second kind, is the decomposition. By the way, the, the combination, I don't know if this is important, sometimes called synthesis. Okay. Decomposition is basically the opposite of combination. Something with two components splits apart into those components. Actually, what this, this reaction is reversible. Water with electricity, if, it, if the correct voltage and some ions present, will separate into hydrogen and oxygen gas. That's a decomposition. There's many, many decompositions. That's just a very simple one. Okay, there's still two more. The third basic kind is a single replacement. Sometimes it's also called a single displacement. I think it's just semantics and it doesn't matter at all. Um, but it's one thing with one component reacts with something that has two components and one component leaves and the other one joins. So A joins with C and B gets left alone. So B is by itself and now we have A with C. Um, a really good example would be a metal reacting with an acid. Zinc reacts with two hydrochloric acid to make zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So the hydrogen is bumped and the zinc joins with the chlorine. Yeah, that's a single replacement. All right, is, is everyone on board? Is this okay? All right, uh, the next kind, it's called a double displacement, or sometimes they call it double replacement. I, I always call it double displacement, um, but it's probably not that important. So double displacement has two things with two components, AC, oh, I, I did this backwards, I'm sorry. Let me do AB plus CD. And so if I consider A is the metal or the cation and B is the anion, then the A cation will go with the D anion and the C cation will go with the B anion. And I will get, well, uh, cation A with anion D and cation C with anion B, All right? So an example of that, um, like a precipitation reaction, silver, nitrate plus sodium chloride goes to silver chloride plus sodium nitrate. I have so, a question. Go ahead. Does it matter like if it was DA plus uh, BC, like does it matter which one goes first? Well, uh, all I'm no, it, it doesn't. I'll, I just, I wanted to do A, B, C, D, but, but the main idea is it's cation anion plus cation anion. So when they switch, I want to make sure that a cation is with an anion and a cation, a cation on the left, right? Because you, you, you don't write, you write, you know, I mean, if you think about it, you write sodium chloride. You don't, what you don't write is chlorine sodium, 
right? You don't write that. So I can't just switch them. Uh, I have to be mindful of what's the cation and anion. That's just part of. So I, it, it's just this is just the main thing is that you're doing this one correct, right? That's okay. what really matters. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so those are four basic kinds, and then there's some other special categories that should that everyone should know. So let's. Um, go to special reactions. And so I can have a special reaction and it might be a decomposition or it might be a double displacement or it might be a combination, right? Um, special reactions. So let's actually, let's do the, the first one is combustion. So in a general sense, it, it's um, something reacting X plus oxygen goes to XO2, right? That's the general case. So there are some reactions that you may not think of as combustion, but they are like hydrogen, reacting with oxygen. Now we making water, H2O. That's a combustion reaction. And it's also what, what's the general kind of reaction or the basic kind? We just did that one, right? So this one's also a combination reaction, right? So it's a combination reaction and it's a combustion. There's some textbooks I don't do not like that actually they talk about combination, decomposition, single replacement, double displacement, and then they, they pose combustion as like a fifth category, but really it's, it's a special set. Um, we could also, sulfur plus oxygen goes to put eight of those and have eight SO2. That's also combustion. But usually for combustion, it's usually a carbon, a hydrocarbon, where some amount of carbon and some amount of hydrogen plus oxygen going to carbon dioxide and water. This is the more common form of combustion. And those were the ones that we did, we practiced with, like um, ethane reacting with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water, right? And then, then there was balancing to it. But that, that's, those are combustion reactions. Um, so in, in general, combustion is a uh, reaction with O2. Um, usually, it's produced, it's, it's a hydrocarbon. Let me put that. Usually, it's a hydrocarbon with oxygen making carbon dioxide and water. That is, a, that is, that is our quintessential... Uh, type of combustion reaction or the most common the one that we always our ideal combustion reaction is this one here So maybe I mean th those are possible, but this one's the the one really okay, let's continue um, Another type is an acid base Neutralization So an acid-base neutralization is basically a double displacement reaction. Um, when an acid reacts with a base, the products are water, uh, liquid, and an ionic compound. And so for our purposes, when you get to chem 1A or 1B, acids and bases are a little bit more complicated. But for us, for right now, an acid is something with hydrogen on the left, and typically a non-metal. A base is a metal plus hydroxide. And so when they double displace, the hydroxide goes with the water and the metal goes with the non-metal. And you get water and MX, ionic compound, right? Let me get, give you a classic example would be 
calcium hydroxide, and we did this one, right? Plus HCl goes to water plus CaCl2. Oh, we have 10 minutes. We'll, we'll get through this set. But um, again, I would like people to remind me when I only have one minute left, okay? And, and this is good because we're, blo we're blocking it into good chunks of material. It's really, it's actually cool that it ends. Um, okay, so that's acid-base neutralization. Um, another type of reaction is gas forming. For these, generally, you want to memorize. Uh, there's only one for my class. My favorite gas forming reaction is an acid. So for my class, remember one. Or one kind, we should say. Which is when an acid reacts with a metal carbonate. You get an ionic compound plus water plus carbon dioxide. And so I'm going through these rather quickly. When we, when we get to um, doing uh, precipitation reactions and net ionic equations, I'll, really, I'll slow down and we'll break these apart. But let, let, let me give you, how about if hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium carbonate? And so the, the switching here would be that you would get um, sodium chloride and H2CO3. And there's also a balancing involved in this. I have two sodiums there, so I would have two and two chlorides and two hydrogens. Okay. And there's a side reaction that when I form H2CO3, it rearranges itself to H2O plus CO2. This, this kind of reaction is called a tautomerization. That the hydrogen car, or the carbonic acid or the H2CO3 is less stable than the water and CO2. So it just spontaneously breaks apart into this. And so what we need to do is rewrite and we should rewrite after balancing i'll i'll go back through this later too we're going to spend another lecture on this but at any rate i would rewrite this as 2 hcl let me bring it up yeah thank you 2 hcl plus na2co3 goes to 2 nacl plus h2o plus co2 Okay, so that, that is, that's the, there are many other gas forming reactions, but that's the one I really would like people to learn for this class. This is the Alka-Seltzer equation or the antacid equation, right? You take some Tums or some Mylanta, those kinds of things. Um, it's, it's, they're reacting with the stomach acid and they, they break down into more simpler products. Um, Okay, so again, we'll spend more time with this when we get to net ionic equations. I'd like to like to do that. Um, gas forming, precipitation. Oh, did we did we have? Did I put precipitation? So we had gas forming. <laughs> what was number two? Sorry, guys. I think we had no. We had combustion and acid base neutralization. So another one is precipitation is another classic kind of reaction. This is also a double, usually, usually a DD, a double displacement, okay? Um, so again, uh, something like silver nitrate plus uh, sodium chloride, aqueous, aqueous so we mix these and then we get sodium nitrate which is also aqueous but then we get silver 
chloride, which forms a solid. And we've done this, we've done this in the lab before we went to shelter in place. Um, remember how we know that we saw precipitate? How did we know we saw precipitate? What was the condition that we knew? You guys remember? It got cloudy, right? So when, when I form the solid, there's little micro solid particles in the test tube. And what they do is they block light and it has that appearance of cloudy. If something is dissolved in water, then it's what we call translucent. Tran trans for through and lucent for light. So light can go through it if it's dissolved in water. Translucent when dissolved. Um, cloudy when solid. Okay, so um, there's one more basic kind, well, or, or special kind of reaction I'd like to cover. Um, so I guess number five would be a redox reaction. And we can spend more time on this later. But in a very simple sense, a redox reaction is a gain and a loss of electrons. So if I have uh, magnesium reacts with oxygen to make magnesium oxide. So over here when it's an ion, what's the charge of magnesium? Anyone from their periodic table? Wait, let's put the oxygen down further. Magnesium as an ion would be two plus. Yeah. But when it's an element, it's not an ion, right? right. So this would be magnesium zero. All right. So magnesium loses two electrons. And oxygen, over here, oxygen ion is oxygen two minus. Over here, oxygen as an element is oxygen sharing with oxygen, which is oxygen zero. And so there's, tech, there's technically half reactions involved. Uh, magnesium goes to magnesium two plus plus two electrons that have left. And the oxygen gains two electrons to become oxygen two minus. And then, so um, the one that lost electrons gets oxidized. You have two minutes. Okay. And the one that gains electrons gets reduced. Okay, so that's a quick tour of the basic kinds of reactions. Uh, okay. So since I'm at less than a minute, I'm going to log out here. I'm going to stop the recording and log out.